everyone and welcome. This is session 1929, Devnik Lightning Talk. And we are going to be talking about automating user zero trust policies using SecureX and Duo and applying automated policies. My name is Oksana Sannikova. I'm part of Global Security Architecture team and I'm TSA on the team talking to customers about automation pretty much on a daily basis. My specialty on the team is security APIs, automation and orchestration and SecureX. So you have, may have seen me in the booth earlier and I'll be there again after the session to answer any questions that you have. And uh, today in this uh, little session, we are going to talk a little bit about zero trust, just as a level set, and we'll cover a little bit of uh, zero trust principles. Then we will also talk about Cisco's approach to zero trust. And then after that, we'll look at the demonstration, we'll look at the automation use case. Uh, this is going to be a live demo, so fingers crossed. <laughs> and then we'll come back to conclusions and any questions that you may have on the topic. So first of all, why we're here talking and why you are here, right, interested in zero trust, because the world is evolving. The companies are uh, trying to come back to the offices, to the branches, but partially they're still working from home, and it's very uh, dispersed user environment, right? Uh, users still need to work from anywhere and everywhere. And we have applications that are everywhere and anywhere, right? This hybrid cloud environment. And um, all of that leads to the fact that we do need greater visibility, greater uh, control and flexibility, and be able to apply all those policies dynamically. And uh, why we have challenges with that, right? Because traditionally, we used to perceive security as a perimeter-based uh, measure, right? We had secure internet, uh, um, internal network, right? And then we had to secure our perimeter and we had wild internet. Now we see that situation is evolving. Majority of the attacks are coming from the inside. So we do need to have zero trust policies, right? We cannot trust our internal users anymore. We have to apply least privileged zero trust policies from inside and uh, uh, be able to have that additional context visibility to reassess um, the posture within our organization and change our trust level accordingly and do that all dynamically and automatically. So um, when you ask, when I, if I ask any one of you what zero trust is, I will probably receive different answers from each and one of you because it really depends on your perspective, right? Is it a, a rope or a tree or a snake or well, what zero trust is? It really depends on which team you're part of. If you are in a network team, then for you, zero trust is going to be about network visibility, segmentation, and control. And if you are on um, user identity and access team, then for you, it is going to be about um, identity-based policies and perimeter and um, um, uh, uh, access control, right? Uh, for uh, privilege access uh, control and management. And if you are on the SOC team, then for you, Zero Trust is going to be about how compromises and how um, threats influence my trust level and the policies that we apply to uh, our users, right? So it all depends on the perspective, but all of these answers are correct. Um, fortunately, to put everything together, NIST came, uh, came up with Zero Trust um, framework, architecture framework, and uh, I have some of the policies, um, main uh, policies listed here on the slide, which I just want to uh, highlight because they're very important for the use case we're talking about today. Um, a few very important of them are access to resources is determined by dynamic policy including observable state of the client identity. And then uh, this requesting asset may include other behavioral and environmental attributes. And then the enterprise should to monitor and measure integrity and security posture of its uh, assets periodically and dynamically. And then uh, the enterprise should collect more inf as much information as possible about the current state of assets, network infrastructure, and communications um, to, to assess and improve its security posture. So all of those things are very important, but you have to automate them so they don't overwhelm you and they don't become like another 
uh, pretty much day-to-day uh, -day, um, huge uh, uh, challenge and undertaking. So from Cisco perspective, what uh, Cisco did is uh, we split those principles and uh, we, like, we took the industry knowledge that we have and we split it into three main pillars. Um, we two, uh, zero trust approach to workforce, to workloads, and to workplace. And with the workflows, we are talking about securing, um, making sure that only the right users get access to the applications and only the level that they need to get access to. And then for the workflows, it's securing connections within the applications. And then for the workflows, it's uh, for the workloads, it's uh, securing um, uh, user and device connections and access to your resources, right? Uh, communications. Today, we are going to be talking about workforce use case, but all of those pillars, they can be approached independently, or they, but, but they, all of them should be considered. It doesn't have to be all Cisco, right? For Cisco, all of those pillars, they can be addressed independently, but from the Zero Trust architecture perspective, all of them should be taken into consideration to uh, get to that like full Zero Trust. Um, methodology, right, into all of that methodology. From the product perspective, uh, for each of these pillars, we have a single policy decision point, and then we have products that help us to gain visibility, get additional control and enforcement points, and uh, get additional context, and um, provide that security, depending on the use case we're talking for. So in our demonstration today, we will be looking at Duo as a policy decision point, and we will be looking at the context that is provided by um, Umbrella and by uh, Secure Endpoint um, for the threats that, are, that we see in our organization. So um, from the secure workforce uh, use case, the process that we have to follow is once we secure trust, right, we authenticate our users, we uh, assess their current state, and we establish trust. And based on that trust level, we uh, provide them uh, access on a certain level. Then we have constantly to reassess it. It has to be, um, it does, it's not like one point in time process. We have to continuously keep verifying trust and checking um, if there are any additional risks, if there are any additional threats that will affect the original decision that we made. And that's what we are going to be doing in this use case today. So the last uh, slide before we go to uh, the use case itself, uh, just a little primer on Duo. With Duo, we are able to use different authentication methods to um, get to verify user trust, that we are only working with the trusted users. We can verify device trust by uh, uh, assessing device posture and health. And then we provide uh, same approach to enforce access to the applications, regardless whether, whether the, those are on-prem or cloud-based applications. So that's essentially on the high level what uh, Duo allows us to do as the policy decision point in this scenario. So let's talk a lot about the use case. The use case we are t uh, looking at here, um, let's say we have an internal endpoint that um, shows us some malicious activity meaning it's trying to reach to different malicious URLs and um, domains, and there's, there's obviously something is going on. And so we get um, this, and there's a lot of bad activity, right? And this um, endpoint ends up in umbrella report with top blocked identities. So it has so much malicious activity going on that it ends up, end, ends up one of the top blocked identities on our list. So we pull that report, we look at this endpoint, we get all the information associated with this endpoint, who is the user, uh, what malicious domains this user tried to reach. And then we, uh, we combine this report, we get user information, we go to Duo via the API, we get a user profile from Duo, and uh, we check what policy is applied to this user, and based on the malicious activity that we see, we de deactivate that user, so until uh, we complete our investigation, this user cannot access any of the applications, regardless of the device or the application that uh, he's trying to access. Um, we block this user um, by first sending approval requests, which is 
we don't just block it, we ask for approval and that request goes to our senior analyst via um, WebEx message. And then once it's approved, the user gets blocked and we create a ServiceNow ticket that um, concludes all of that and brings all of that information for us together. And so to do so, we are going to use a SecureX orchestration component. So if you go to SecureX, Okay, uh, guys, can I share my desktop? Yep, okay. Here we go, thank you. So if we go to SecureX, this is the dashboard that we see um, right here. And we see that there is some bad activity going on. There are some blocked requests. We can see it right from the dash dashboard as well. But then if we go to the orchestration component and we look at the automated workflow that we are going to run, for now we are going to run it manually. And no, of course you would want that to be run periodically to pull out those um, blocked identities and do all of that automatically. Every minute, every five minutes, every 24 hours, whatever makes sense for your organization and the amount of this kind of alerts that you want to process. So while this is running, you can see on top uh, the status change to waiting for event. This means that we were able to pull the original security uh, event information from Umbrella for this malicious DNS activity, D, uh, DNS activity for this endpoint, and we send an approval request um, to block this, uh, the associated user in Duo. And uh, I open here WebEx Messenger, and this is my uh, ch like, uh, channel where all the information comes in. And you can see that it says that user granite is, has identified uh, as umbrella DNS top blocked identity. Please click here to approve automated remediation. I am using um, incognito mode, so I just copy this link and I will paste it here. But normally you would just click on this link and open it up. And this opens an approval request for me, which is click approve because I have, uh, I'm the senior analyst, I have access to this approval act, um, request. So now that it has been approved, we can see that workflow keeps running and it executed successfully. So if I go to Duo, you see that first my user granite was active. And if I refresh it now, we see that uh, the user is now disabled. So it was done within seconds automatically for us. And now we can continue investigating what's going on with this endpoint, what was the root cause analysis. We can use secure X threat response for that investigation. Uh, but at least we know that this user currently is, uh, has least privileged access to our organization. And that's the whole point of uh, using zero trust automation. And then I also mentioned that we will have an incident created based on this. And I, I have a pivot here to my ServiceNow instance. And here is the new incident that was created. Let's check out the information. So it tells us that um, this is, um, you, you know, all of these are configurable. We obviously can change the um, level of impact and urgency and criticality of this event. And we also see that it shows us um, that the top block identity that we were working with is granite. It tried to reach to these malicious domains and uh, request to block access for dual security user granite was approved by this person. So all of that has been already gathered for us automatically. And uh, once we investigate this, we can use um, another response action to um, enable that user back once we cleared out the incident and um, everything is back to normal. So that's essentially a pretty simple, but uh, at the same time, um, very day-to-day -day, uh, kind of uh, like use case that customers have to deal with and have to um, be able to accomplish. And SecureX with its APIs, with its orchestration component, allows to do it as you have seen within seconds. We have all of those activities pre-configured. We have a library of the workflows that you can just 
pull out, uh, configure to work with your API keys, and everything will be working. So uh, I definitely encourage you to explore the documentation. If you have any more questions, please um, see us at the SecureX booth. And uh, don't forget to fill in the surveys, because we do need your feedback to understand if we are meeting your expectations, what other use cases you would like to see us uh, covering and demoing for you. And uh, yeah, please uh, leave a comment sharing what you liked, what you didn't like, what you see, uh, what you would like to see in this kind of sessions. We really appreciate your feedback. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs>